In this screencast, we will review blunt liver injury as part two to our blunt abdominal trauma series. At the end of this screencast, you should be able to describe the relevance of the liver injury grading system to management and recommend next steps in management based on some key imaging features. The American Association for the Surgery of Trauma, or the AAST, is the most widely accepted grading system. It was initially developed in 1989, but was most recently revised in 2018. Its initial scale was before widespread availability of interventional radiology and the routine use of embolization. And the revisions do reflect the importance of embolization in management. Let's dive right into the scale. There are two basic types of injuries that fall within the liver injury scale, one being a hematoma, two being a parenchymal laceration. So with grade one, these are minimal injuries. With the hematoma only occupying about 10% of the surface area of the liver, or the parenchymal laceration only extending one centimeter or less into the liver. A grade two liver injury, again, can be classified as either a hematoma or a laceration. A hematoma that is subcapsular should occupy less than 50% of the surface area. If there is an interparenchymal hematoma or a contained hematoma within the liver, it must be less than 10 centimeters and show no evidence of active extravasation. A laceration will be grade two if it is less than three centimeters in depth. A grade three liver injury starts to become a more severe injury where we see the subcapsular hematoma occupying more than 50% of the surface area or a contained hematoma that's greater than 10 centimeters or any contained hematoma showing active bleeding or active extravasation. Lacerations that are classified as grade three will be greater than three centimeters in depth. Note that you can increase the grade of a liver injury if there are multiple injuries. So if you have two grade two injuries, that will be a grade three injury. If you have three grade one injuries, that could be a grade three injury. But you cannot increase the grade or advance the grade beyond grade three based on multiple different injuries. Grade four lacerations are where we're getting into these very severe injuries where there may not be hematoma, but there is actual disruption of the hepatic tissue or the hepatic parenchyma. So parenchymal disruption up to 75% of the liver is going to be a grade four injury. And then if you have active bleeding, okay, into the peritoneal cavity. So unlike a grade three, where you have active bleeding that is contained within the liver, you now have active bleeding that is extending into the peritoneal cavity causing hemoperitoneum. Finally, a grade five injury is where there has been at least 75% of the liver tissue that's been disrupted, or you have a laceration that extends to a major central vein or the vena cava. These are very severe injuries. They often have delayed complications, but they also can be unstable patients that require either angiography or surgery. This grading scale does not correlate with the need for operative management. In the past, almost 80% of patients with blunt liver injury were managed operatively, now greater than 80% are managed non-operatively. The scale does correlate nicely with patient outcomes, and in particular, patients who are managed non-operatively will have a greater incidence of delayed complication with a higher grade injury. So let's take a look at a few classic cases. Here we have a 17-year-old woman, unrestrained driver, in a 45 mile per hour collision. She comes in with loss of consciousness and we can see multiple injuries to the liver. So here we have this area of hypo enhancement or a low density area within the liver. We have another low density area within the liver. These may qualify as contained hematomas, but this actually is more of a laceration with an associated hematoma. And notice that when we look at this in coronal and sagittal views, that laceration or hematoma encompasses the right hepatic vein and extends right up to the IVC here. 
Because of that central venous involvement of the laceration or hematoma extending to the IVC, this is going to be a high-grade lesion. We don't see any active extravasation. This is a grade 5 liver injury. The patient was managed non-operatively and did not require embolization or angiography. They had a stable hemoglobin and hematocrit, they had stable abdominal examinations, and they were actually discharged home without any operative or interventional radiology management. So this is a case of a grade five injury due to injury occurring along the central veins of the liver. We have another 17-year-old woman who was in a motor vehicle collision. This time, at least she was wearing her seatbelt. Also had loss of consciousness. And in this case, we can see extensive injury to the right hemi liver. The injury, this is what we would consider parenchymal disruption. You can see there is poor perfusion and heterogeneity of almost the entire right hemi liver. In addition, this injury extends right up to the intrahepatic IVC and involves both the middle hepatic vein and the right hepatic vein. In this case, we can see the right hepatic vein in the middle of this parenchymal disruption. This is again a very high grade injury with parenchymal disruption and central venous involvement, a shattered or devascularized liver, parenchymal disruption. And again, this was a grade five liver laceration. Due to the extent of the parenchymal disruption, this patient was sent to angiography to assess for active extravasation that may not have been detected on the CT, but the angiography was normal. The patient did not require operative management. One week after their initial presentation, the patient was re-imaged. And we can now see the disrupted liver parenchyma has started to become more well-defined. We can again see that that disruption extends right up to the right hepatic vein and the IVC. And I believe this patient was presenting with a degree of peritonitis and some hyperbilirubinemia and abdominal pain. And this person went to a HIDA scan, and on the HIDA scan, they could see accumulation of the radio tracer within this large area of parenchymal disruption. And so that means that their biliary system has been disrupted and is leaking into this area of parenchymal disruption, resulting in a biloma. The bile leak was managed non-operatively, so the patient was able to go to ERCP. They were able to cannulate the bile duct. They did demonstrate this large area of contrast accumulation within that biloma, indicating disruption of the biliary tree. And a stent was placed to allow for improved flow. And the patient was, again, managed without the need for surgery. They did, in addition to stenting the bile duct, go to interventional radiology for percutaneous drainage of the biloma. And here we can see the fluoroscopic CT images of the interventional radiologist placing a pigtail catheter into the biloma. Another interesting case, we have a 22-year-old woman, again, not wearing their seatbelt and becoming unconscious at the scene. In this case, the liver actually looks relatively intact. There certainly is a hematoma here, so a small amount of fluid, perihepatic fluid or perihepatic hematoma. But when we look more closely at the vena cava, the intrahepatic IVC, we see irregularity of the vessels, expansion of the vessel, okay? And this is highly abnormal. And this indicates a central venous injury, likely disruption of the intrahepatic IVC. This patient did require surgery. They continued to be hemodynamically unstable after a period of stability related to aggressive resuscitation. This patient was actually placed on cardiopulmonary bypass and their central veins were repaired primarily. When we think about the different complications that occur from non-operative management of high grade liver injury, bile leak and biloma are going to be the most common. A bile leak into the abdominal cavity, meaning an uncontained leak, can result in bile peritonitis, and that can cause abdominal pain, leukocytosis, and hyperbilirubinemia from the resorption of the bile. You can also get hemobilia, where there is a communication between one of the vascular structures in the liver and the biliary tree, and that often results in blood filling up 
the bile ducts because most of the vascular structures are higher pressure structures than the biliary tree. You can also develop hepatic abscess where there is super infection of a hematoma or a region of parenchymal disruption or a biloma. Many of these complications can still be managed non-operatively with ERCP and stenting or percutaneous intervention or embolization, but at times they may require operative management based on the stability of the patient. In summary, it is hemodynamic instability that determines operative management. Most of our vascular and biliary injuries are managed with minimally invasive techniques, and a higher grade correlates with a higher incidence of delayed complications, so consider getting some follow-up imaging in patients with higher grade injuries. Thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed part two of this series on blunt abdominal trauma, and will join us for part three.